thanks to everyone to uh, to showing up on our community virtual hours. For those who don't know me, I'm uh, Sean Saram. I'm the CEO and founder of Avantage. We have Carmen online with us. She is our community manager, and she's uh, wonderful. To any questions you have, any any services you need, anything you need to either offer or any requests, you know, things we don't have on the platform, definitely reach out to her and let her know what you need, just like Patty did this morning. And we, we either know a member that we can connect you with, or we can recruit uh, the services that you're looking for. So our goal is to build a community of services that you need. So if we can add new members, quality members, uh, that would be awesome. If you can refer other members uh, that you know, other business owners that you think that will benefit from our uh, platform, definitely recommend them. We give you a hundred Avantage bucks uh, referral fee. We've upped that from 50 and they get 200 Avantage bucks. So it's a win-win for everyone and the community wins as a whole. Because the more quality members we have, the better for everyone. Um, so the purpose of uh, our weekly call is basically just to get, get to know one, one another, connect, share our wins and challenges, uh, have some authentic conversations and really share resources and knowledge. We're all entrepreneurs, we're all business owners uh, and a lot of the areas are, uh, uh, you know, they, they go, they're, they're common. So the issues and the challenges, it's not very specific to industry or, or the trade we're in. So uh, just to share our challenges and uh, and collaborate and educate. And that's where uh, our education piece comes in. Every, um, every week we have a 15 minute presentation uh, by one of our members, which most of uh, our members uh, have been participating. We love having you and uh, the, we've received great reviews and value. And we'd like to continue doing this. So anyone who likes to do a presentation I think we're, we have some openings coming up next month, so please feel free to reach out to myself or Carmen and let us know what topic you like to, uh, to present on. Now we have today, we have Ashley Bright. Uh, can I have you come in, Ashley? Are you uh, available? Oh, there I'm, he is. I'm right here. Oh, okay. I don't know why I couldn't see you. There you go. I wore the glasses just so you wouldn't miss me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, those, those uh, stand, uh, the uh, classic, uh, brand uh, glasses let me make you did i make you a host already yeah you're a co-host already oh, okay awesome so um ashley is an amazing friend i've known him uh from for maybe two probably even a little bit longer than two years we met at galvanize he was here working hard trying to build his business uh, trying to help other entrepreneurs and uh you know, coaching them on messaging, uh, speed, you know, uh, presentation, and how to connect with your audience, may it be investors, customers, clients, partners, uh, no matter what your messaging and the way you deliver it is, is essential as a leader, as a, as a CEO. So that's where I got to know him. He uh, helped me personally with some of our pitches, some of our presentations, uh, great insight, and uh, that's why I love to have my friend do a presentation uh, today. Without further ado, Ashley, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Can everyone hear me? Good, excellent. Uh, so let me just get my screen sharing here and we can get rolling. Uh, let's see. Perfect. All right. Whoops, hold on a sec. Trying to get my video back on the screen here. Let's see. No. Nope. All right, we'll just wing it. All right, anyway, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you inviting me. Sean, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to speak with all of you this morning. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about uh, one of the uh, critical pieces of communication that uh, we have to master in order to inspire our audiences to take some form of action. Okay, when it comes to any kind of communication, whether you're up on stage, whether you're on a phone call, whether you're sitting across from someone in a meeting, you need to be able to trigger something in them that creates, them, creates action for them. Because otherwise, nothing's going to happen. No change is going to take place. And so whenever I'm working with my clients, I'm always striving for that action. How do we create action? How do we inspire action so that you can get results? Uh, 
And today I want to talk to you about something that I refer to as turning resistance into yes. Okay, and just real quick sort of protocol here. If you have questions, uh, please just drop them into that window. We'll definitely have a few minutes at the end to, uh, to address any questions you may have. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Okay, so this quote that's up here, uh, no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, this quote is from the uh, Dead Poets Society, um, and that came back in 89, so I must have seen this when I was in high school. And uh, you know, that really resonated with me. It, it sort of tapped into that entrepreneurial spirit that I had within me. Um, and I suspect that many of you have within you as well. And so, all I didn't appreciate at the time uh, this quote has defined my career. You see, the last 20 years of my career, I used words to get buy-in from ideas from companies like Apple, Target News, and ABC News. But it wasn't always like this. In fact, there was a time early in my career when I struggled to communicate my ideas. My inability to present well and my frustration at not seeing my ideas a what can I say, lit a fire under my ass. Because just like many of you, I wanted my ideas to have an impact. I wanted to change the world. So I had to learn how to do it better. And so through trial and error, and believe me, there were lots of errors, which if you want to talk about in a separate conversation, I'm happy to share. Um, I learned what worked and what didn't. And in time, I was able to share my ideas with certainty and confidence. And there's nothing better walking into a room, Fortune 500 executive, my little old idea kind of tucked under my arm, and walking out with their approval to make that a reality. It's from these experiences that I realized that without irresistible messaging that inspires action, your idea die. Okay? The other thing I noticed is that I wasn't alone. Okay, in presentation after presentation, meeting after meeting, I must have sat through thousands in my career. I would watch smart people, many that were considered subject matter experts in their field, who simply couldn't persuade the decision makers to see the value in what they were sharing. And it meant that they would abandon their idea, which I thought was just terrible. And so the seed was planted for me. I realized there had to be a better way to do this. And so over the last seven years, I've been working with entrepreneurs just like you. And through one-on-one -on -one coaching and group workshops, I've developed the impact speaking method to arm my clients with skills and tools so they can be certain, they can be confident, and they can have an impact with their ideas. This is my passion. This is what drives me every single day. And it's what I want to talk to you about today. So let's jump right in here. So Warren Buffett, I think, said it best. You know, becoming a great communicator will increase your business by 50%. And I don't know about you, but in these challenging times, I think we could all use 50% more of business. So let's jump right in and talk about how to turn resistance into a yes. Okay, this one thing, when implemented properly, will dramatically improve your success and increase your success when you're on sales calls, when potentially you're meeting with investors or meeting with existing customers. Whenever you're trying to share this message, you will find value in this. And it doesn't matter whether you're new to presentations or public speaking, whether you've done it on a regular basis or whether you're an expert, mastering this will dramatically change the way you communicate. All right. so. When we think about our ideas, we think about something we're excited about. We often think of it as the holy grail, okay? This is the greatest thing ever. It's gonna solve this problem. People are gonna love this. It's gonna make such an impact. And that may be true, but the thing to remember is that whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, it represents change in the mind of your listener. Okay, they're starting to think about, okay, this is maybe a great idea or a great solution, but I'm going to have to pay more. I'm going to have to change this. I'm going to have to do X, Y, and Z. And so there's, there's a level of concern there. And what it brings about is resistance. Okay, it's going to bring about resistance to your idea, regardless of how good it is. Okay, and so 
what I want to talk about is, is how we can use, how you can use contrast and rhythm to create a connection with the people that you need to take your business to the next level. Okay, because that is what it's all about, creating that connection, building that trust, okay? So let's talk first about contrast. So contrast is something that the human body, the human mind is naturally drawn to. Whenever we see something big, we're always sort of juxtaposing that, whether visually or mentally, with something that's small. That's how we do it, how big it is, okay? And so when you think contrast I mean in the most basic sense day and night love and hate up and down big and small okay our brains naturally look for those contrasts and so think about the power in the way you communicate if you can start positioning your perspective your idea your product or your offering in a positive place and contrast it against a competitor, against their current solution, the status quo, whatever they're doing right now. Okay, if you can tap into that natural contrast, you're gonna create essentially a pathway for your listener to see the value in what you're sharing, to see the opportunity in your product or your service. Okay, you've cleared away all the obstacles by using contrast. Okay, so the second thing that I want to talk about, and these work together, contrast, and the next thing I want to talk about is rhythm. Okay, and I always find it funny, I use this metaphor, and we're in the middle of the desert. And so I'm always curious whether anyone on the call actually is a sailor, but I used to do some sailing years ago. And when it comes to sailing, there are times when you are going to have to sail directly into the wind in order to get to your destination. Okay, obviously we can't control the wind, and so you need to work with it. And so you can't sail directly into the wind, but what you can do is use this technique where you're essentially sort of zigzagging back and forth and you're moving towards your goal. Okay, and what you're doing is you're actually using the power of the wind coming directly at you to fuel you and give you energy to move towards that goal. Okay, and so keep this analogy in mind on this next diagram here. Because this diagram represents the, the structure, if you will, of a, an engaging, a persuasive presentation or a piece of communication. Okay, so just like the sailboat analogy that when we start our presentation, we start our phone call, we start our whatever, our investor call. Okay, we want to take them right to that finish point. We want to get right to that destination, have them see how great our idea is, how great our company is. But just like the sailboat, you can't do that because there's going to be that resistance coming at you from your audience. Whether they're aware of it or not, there will be this resistance in their mind. And so the trick is when you know your audience, you know your customer, you know the people you're speaking to, you should be able to anticipate where are they going to resist? Are they going to resist on price? Are they going to res resist on complexity? Are they going to resist on a whole myriad of other things? And so what you want to do is be thinking about those. Be thinking about what are they going to resist on? And that's what these X's are along the bottom. Okay, all the resistance points, price, complexity, time frame, you know, whatever those things are. And now you need to be thinking about, well, what things are going to counter that? If they're worried about price, how can I talk about price in a way that's going to mitigate their concern, that's gonna remove that barrier. If they're concerned about complexity, how can I work the simplicity of my solution into this conversation, okay? And so as you go through this, you're breaking down that resistance, okay? They object on price, I'm gonna counter that. They object on complexity, I'm gonna counter that. And when I say counter, it's not, it's not this, okay? You're not outwardly saying to them, oh, you're wrong. What you're doing is you're very elo eloquently working into your pitch, your presentation, some key language that's already addressed the concern that's in their head already. And so that's how powerful it is because they don't even realize that your concerns are being addressed. And so if you were to look at a presentation, a piece of communication, it's going to have this natural rhythm to it. 
okay, where you're moving through and you're convincing people, you're persuading them to see your point of view, to see the value in what you're offering. And just like that sailboat, you're going to get to your destination. And when you get there, there's going to be no resistance. By the time you get to your offer, by the time you get to that action state, people are going to be primed to take that action. And the other great thing about rhythm, the other great thing about contrast, is that it's also a fabulous tool for keeping your audience engaged. Okay, audiences are distracted. And now because we're on Zoom and we're at home and doing our thing, we are more distracted than ever. And so utilizing this technique not only will help you persuade people to see your perspective and be more willing to buy into your product, your service, your, your perspective, but you're also going to create engagement. Okay, so everyone that's watching, everyone that's on the call, and I know we're going to get back to physical world at some point, people in that audience are going to respond positively. Because utilizing this technique is going to help you create engagement and clear away any obstacles to success. So what I want to tell you, share with you now is how to utilize this, how to bring this into your own practice, because this is, it's a little bit complex, okay? But I'm going to make this super simple, okay? So let's go all analog. You can turn off your computers for this exercise, but what you want to do is just grab some post-it notes and a Sharpie, and it's important that it's a Sharpie. Okay, because you don't want to be able to write too much detail on these post-it notes. And what you're going to do is essentially take all the things that you want to talk about and put them on notes, one thought per post-it note. And on this slide, I've referred to it as the brain dump, but more accurately, it's called mapping resistance. And so what you're going to do is you're going to write down on a post-it note, okay, my customer, my client's going to resist on this thing. Great. They're going to resist on this thing. Great but I'm gonna counter with these things. And what you're doing is you're mapping all the different ways that they could put an obstacle or a barrier in front of adopting your idea. And you're gonna now create those counterpoints. And so this is actually a shot from my office from a couple years ago, but I use this technique all the time with clients and with my own work. And what I'm doing with these different colors is I'm mapping the rhythm of my presentation. I'm looking for the resistance and my counterpoint. So before I've gotten into PowerPoint or visuals or colors or anything that's going to get in the way of my message, I'm able to identify the rhythm of my talk. I'm able to make sure that I'm breaking down that resistance from my audience so that I'm going to have a much easier conversion at the end. Okay, so this is turning resistance into a yes. Okay, it's incredibly powerful. One last thing I wanna, I wanna just leave you with, because uh, I always have, Sean knows, I always have to include something like this in any talk I deliver. Okay, and so I wanna talk about that moment of taking the stage. And like I said, we're gonna get back to those physical stages, so this, this image will, will resonate at that point, but until then, we're all looking at this as our stage. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether you're in a physical room with people or whether you're on a Zoom call like we are now, there is going to be that natural anxiety, okay? that fear of public speaking, that fear of being on stage. And sometimes it's that excitement and that kind of those things dueling themselves out inside your body as you're trying to present. And so I wanna share with you just a couple things to help minimize that, okay? So the first one is your breath. Okay. It is so, so powerful, and it's obviously something that is within all of us. Okay. And so the next time you're about to hop on a Zoom call for a big meeting or client call, I want you to think about your breath, and I want you to take just a couple minutes and try this. Okay. So these numbers on the screen, the way this works is that you breathe in for a four count, you hold for a seven, and then you exhale for eight. And if you that two or three times before you get out on stage, I guarantee you're going to feel that anxiety drop significantly and you'll be more ready to confidently share your message. So what I'm going to do, I want to have everyone participate in this for a sec. So just close your eyes with me and we're going to inhale for four. Okay, ready? Okay, now I want you to hold.
Okay, do it one more time. In for four. Okay, so try that. That'll help bring those nerves down. And then the last thing is remember to smile. Okay, we are still human beings after all. It doesn't matter if we're multiple screens apart. When you smile, it's a natural connection builder. People will respond in kind to your message. Okay, and so always remember to smile. And I always put these little post-it notes up there with a smiley face by the camera. And I imagine I'm talking to my best friend or my wife or someone I really care about and I'm just comfortable sharing with them. Okay, so I'm wrapping up here and I wanna just say it has been a pleasure speaking to the Avonage community. Okay, speaking with my fellow entrepreneurs, coaches, marketers, dreamers, or as Steve Jobs once said, the crazy ones. I feel at home with you guys. Uh, and I would love to empower each and every one of you with skills to move from a place of uncertainty and fear in your communication to a place of confidence in every way that you communicate. And so I want to offer this up. Um, if you are ready to commit to yourself, if you're ready to improve your communication skills and get dramatic results for your business, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching package just for you. And if you're interested, um, please send me an email to the email that's on that screen there, and I'll send out a one-on-one -on -one coaching questionnaire. Okay, I use these questionnaires to just understand more about what's going on with you and how I can provide value. I wanna make sure there's an alignment so that you can get the best results possible. Because one of the things I've learned, you know, it's interesting, uh, I'm 47 now, and when I was 44, uh, I, I attempted to start skateboarding with my kids. Um, I had skateboarded in the past, and I fell, and I got injured, and I noticed that my body didn't recover in the same way. I knew that I needed to get back into shape, but I was convinced that I could do it myself. Uh, and so I tried. But it seemed like every two or three weeks, I would tweak my back or my neck or hurt myself in some way. And so it was like two steps forward, three steps back. I did this for over three years. Okay? And then finally, finally, I had this realization. I needed to get professional help. I needed to hire a coach. And I did. And I did that just before the holidays last year. And uh, I'm proud to say I am stronger and I feel better than I ever have. And I haven't thrown my back out at all. And so I say this only because I know how challenging it is as a small business owner. You feel like you need to do everything yourself, okay, that you shouldn't be asking for help. But, you know, with this great community we've got here and supportive people, I want you to always remember that you can ask for help and it's okay to seek the help you need to be successful. So with that, I want to thank you very much for your time and thank you, Sean, again, for the opportunity. And now if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Thank you so much, Ashley. That was uh, that was amazing presentation. So much value. Um, uh, if we can get a copy of this later on from you, I want to make sure everyone gets it because there's so much we can also uh, we can all use uh, in the in the the concept that you just presented to us. Uh, we'll start with any questions. Anyone has a questions for uh, for Ashley? Oh, there's a bunch of things in the chat here, so maybe I'll have a look here. Is there anything? Uh, yeah, actually, Carmen. Okay. Yeah, there, there, those are some kind of, actually, Bradley has a question. Where did you get that custom backdrop? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Um, um, I, can, I can send you out the link. I'm trying to remember. It was, uh, it was in LA. I, I just got it online and sent. I've actually got two of them. I've got a much larger one for those red carpet events that I've never held. <laughs> But it sure is, it sits well stored in the storage locker in the garage, so. Looks great. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, Wilbur, you have a question? Wait, is anybody going to address the fact that Ashley is 40 what? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're 33, man. Well, wow. I'm going gonna, gonna to start smiling more. <laughs> The trick is no hair. You can't see the gray. So, you know. <laughs> well, thank you, Wilbur. I appreciate that observation. <laughs> no, but um, uh, truly, I wanted to <clears throat> point out when you talked about um, dealing with 
objections. I think um, a lot of business owners like myself, we misinterpret that. And to be honest with you, um, I, I do I do get majority of my sales calls. So I get on my sales calls myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not good at that. Like as soon as you give me the first objection, I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> Um, because in my mind, uh, the, the, the understanding that I have about objection is that somebody doesn't want the service or they don't need it. And that's wrong because there is a reason why they got on the phone call with me and they will find any excuse to, uh, like you said, to say no or something to the offer that you are presenting to them and they need it. They got on the phone call with you. But I struggle with the fact that if somebody says no, I cannot come back and I feel like I'm going to be pushy because of my mis misconception of what, uh, uh, you know, dealing with objection is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that to understand, and there's, there's some great kind of training out there, I've, I've participated in some of it, is that when it comes to sales, it comes to any kind of negotiation, there has to be agreement right from the beginning. And so there's another saying, which is, you know, no is the beginning of the conversation. Okay, so the idea is that when someone objects, you know, let's say on price, that's their first objection point. Um, you know, if you immediately go at it with like a counterpoint, you, they're gonna sort of put up their defenses and then they're gonna come up with something else and put, you know, and you're slowly moving apart rather than pulling together. And so what I always recommend and what I do is when someone objects, for whatever reason, I agree with them, you know, and I'll say to them, hey, you know what, I, I completely understand, you know, I mean, crazy times we're living in right now, there's a lot of uncertainty, and so I can understand, you know, your concern about price. So what I'm doing is I'm acknowledging them, okay, I'm now starting to, start to build that relationship and that connection, but then I'll pivot it, and I might go to say um, something along the lines of, but when it comes to price, I mean, I want you to also think about the price of not fixing this problem in your business. Okay, and then you kind of let them for a little bit you know, and then they'll say something. And so, it's, you know, there, there isn't sort of a simple bullet that's gonna solve all those objections. But the trick is that, I mean, we all know our customers. I hope we know our customers fairly well, or our audience, our target. And so if we, we have a sense for like, you know, the top five or eight things that they object to, you know, we start to get a little bit more familiar with like, okay, well, what's my counter, what's my counterpoint to that? Or how do I pivot from a no on price or a no on X or Y? Um, and so it's, I think you want to try and when we talk about planning for it, setting up this presentation and the rhythm and stuff, I'm thinking of it in terms of like resistance counterpoint. But when it comes to the actual conversation, um, we want to avoid, you know, like it coming across as like a counterpoint. You, you want it to come across as conversational, you know, so before you've even said it, you know, I'm in my little sales, I'm addressing two or three things that I know they're concerned about. So anyway, so that was a little bit long answer, but I hope that answered the question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ashley. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, Thanks. Sorry, I'm getting echoing. I apologize. So Ashley, I, I was curious. I, I, you guys hear me? Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Can you hear me? Oh, go ahead now. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. All right, awesome. Go there for a second. Um, first off, great presentation. And I wanted to ask you, so 47 years on this planet, a lot of experience. I wanted to ask you, what was your biggest lesson? And oftentimes our biggest lesson, we don't realize what it is until it's later on. So what was the journey you took to realize why that lesson was your biggest one? <laughs> so I have to come up with the lesson and then I have to explain why. Oy, um, well, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is sort of, answering the question sort of right on the nose, but um, I mean, for me, becoming a parent was probably the biggest um, pivotal moment for me. 
and it, uh, it set in motion my desire to want to do something that was having more impact on individuals and the world more broadly. Um, and so that is one of the sort of critical moments in my career and my life that sort of gave me a different view on the world. And it, it, I ended up leaving my full-time roles. I ended up sort of doing what I'm doing now and trying to figure it out. You know, it, it began my entrepreneurial journey. Um, so I have no idea if that answered the question. No, that, that answered it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm kind of oh, you on the spot. I appreciate it. No, no, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Ashley, I got a question. Um, sure. Hey, Bradley. I was wondering what would you, what do you like to recommend to people in terms of kind of like resources or mentors that really made a difference for you, whether it's books, people, courses, you know, any of that kind of stuff? Sure, sure. So, um, I mean, I have, I've had so many great people in my life, mentors and others. And so I recommend if you can find yourself some people that you trust that have great information, um, you know, try and get as much as you can from them because it's just, it's tremendously valuable. So um, I think mentors for sure. And then in terms of, of actual experiences or, or reading and things like that, I've got a whole bunch of books that I love. I've always got a whole ton on the go. Um, you know, I'm going to pull out a few now just to share. Um, Made to Stick is a great one. And then, I don't know if you can read this, The Essentialist is a great one. And I mean, this is sort of both about communication and ideas and public speaking, but also about, um, you know, just business in general. This is another great one. Oh, sorry, I'll hold it that way. Cool. Thank you. Okay, not, not, not so much business, but just it, it gives you a different perspective because they're looking at the underdog. And so it's really interesting kind of how that manifests itself in, in the world. Um, so yeah, I mean, lots of books on communication. Um, Nancy Duarte is an author of um, some really great books on presentations, public speaking, how to create stories. Um, another great uh, author is um, Kendra Hall. She has a great story or a great book uh, called Stories That Stick. Um, so I just, you know, I, I just try and consume as much as I can. One of the things that I do as well, which is valuable, I'm looking for a book as a reference here, is um, I will not only buy the book, but then I will get the, um, the audio book and I'll listen to both and I go through and sort of scribble all over and take notes and stuff like that. So I try to make it, you know, if I can get, I've got the visual, I've got the audio and I'm physically underlining. I feel like I'm hopefully taking it all in or maybe I'm just overwhelming myself and I've learned nothing. I don't know, but I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that would, that's my thing. It's sort of, you know, just great people. Uh, I think always be willing to ask for help, you know, say, Hey, I don't know how to do this. Can I get some help? And then just, I always have three to five books on the go. And, um, you know, online courses as well. And the other thing too, and this is not a, a pitch for me in terms of like hiring a coach, but one of the things that I found was really pivotal for me was spending the money on a good coach. Okay. I'd spent probably the first six, five and a half, six years doing it myself with mentors and stuff like that. And then I, I hired a coach, someone that I'd known for a number of years and had seen his successes with his clients. And it, cost a pretty penny you know to be honest I couldn't afford it at the time but the change was was almost immediate because they were not in my head they were not in my business they were able to kind of give me really valuable actionable stuff um, that kind of helped me break through a lot of it just to be honest a lot of it was was all right here okay my mindset about everything from money to sales to my product to my value were all kind of muddy and so getting someone to help clarify that and really see where your value is is tremendously important so again a very long-winded answer but i hope that answered the question <laughs> all right yeah no thank you and mark you're next well i was going to say patty's had her hand up for a while i'll go after patty hey, there is patty hey oh, patty oh there she is okay go ahead patty hey ashley i have a comment and then i have a question for you so i don't know if you can see my shirt but I wore this specifically for today and it says agenda of the day. And when you were talking about breathing, I breathe this. Okay. Let dog in, let dog out, yeah. let dog in, let dog out. So it's comical, but exactly what you're saying about breathing, 
that's my passion. Okay. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to ask you, and somebody had commented on it on the chat, but I want to ask you specifically. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned about, you have mentioned about, um, you know, price, you know. So I come to you and I say, you know, I would really like your coaching, but you know, I don't think that I can afford it. How would you react to that? Well, I think I'd, I'd go back to the previous conversations we probably had in, in the way I do my sales calls. What I often do is I, I will dig the hole for people. I'll have them dig the hole themselves where, you know, before we've gotten to talking about my price and my offerings and my services, I will have gotten real clarity from you on the fact that, you know, your missed sales calls uh, cost you $5,000 a month. And this has been happening for the last year and a half. And so before we've talked about my price, we've already talked about the fact that you're losing $35,000 a year or $100,000 a year. And so when it comes to the, the price objection, it's, it's usually less resistant because I've already shown them how much they're losing already. And so my price is, is almost nothing in comparison. But again, I mean, if, if, it's, if they still object, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and pivot and I wanna understand from them, okay, I'll, I'll go back and I'll start digging into, okay, let's talk about the thing we just mentioned. Okay, you're missing sales calls. Okay, that's costing you 5,000 a pop. Okay, so that is a significant price. And so what I'm trying to do is just get them thinking about the other side of the equation. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's, it's all about that setup. I think that's part of the challenge. And this is one of the things I learned from one of my coaches a couple of years ago, is that we often like will go right to the positive, you know, right to the benefit of my solution, right to the benefit of my product. When we may not, the person we're speaking to may have no real understanding of the problem that we solve or that they have that problem even. Especially like when it comes to what I do, messaging and communication, it's not something that's top of mind for most, for many people until they're in a situation where they have to get on stage. And so it's on me to lead with the problem, make them really understand like, where is this problem manifesting itself and how big is it? And so I've now uncovered all that before I even talk about what I'm gonna do to solve it. Um, and so that's one of the one of the key things that I do, and I I do that with my social media messaging as well. I try to lead with something that's going to capture their interest, that's around a pain point they have, rather than, "Hey, learn to be a great public speaker." That's less compelling than, "Hey, stop losing millions of dollars a year because you can't communicate," you know, or something to that effect. You know, it's it's triggers different things within the the listener. Thank you. I have one other question if we have a couple more minutes. How are we doing, Sean? Are we good? I'm not really even paying attention to time. Uh, sure. We got, I know Mark has got some questions. I don't see, okay. or at least I didn't see that many other hands. So go ahead, uh, Patty. Thank you. And that is, you mentioned that you had a, a tough time being able to, um, um, with, with the coach, simply because of the price. How mm -hmm. did you meet that objective for yourself? Well, I mean, it was, I remember this very distinctly, like towards the end of the call with him. Um, I mean, I, I was already sold. I mean, it was one of those things where I felt like, okay, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I need, I mean, I literally said this to him. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I need to figure out how to get the money to pay you. Because he had done exactly the technique that I use now, which is he had made me see just how many holes in my sales process process there were and how flawed my offerings were and all the things that I, I wasn't able to see for myself. And so to be honest, I, I put it on credit card. I mean, I, I was like, all right, I got this one credit card left and it's got some, <laughs> some space on it. So we're in. And, um, and to be honest, I mean, within the first 90 days, I had acquired um, three more clients and I had more than, you know, quadrupled the income you know, in comparison to what I paid him, you know, have I paid off the credit card yet? Well, that's a different story, but <laughs> so that was, yeah. So I, I kind of, I, I already had justified it to myself. I'd already made the decision. I just needed, needed to find the money. Awesome. Mark. Thank you. Nice. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, really enjoyed meeting you last week and, uh, appreciate you leading with, with that piece and, um, sharing, 
your expertise in a simple, sim simplified way. Um, as a self-proclaimed simplifier, I so appreciated the, the simple explanations of where you were at in terms of the, the up and down. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you articulated it twice, so I actually wanna, I, I wanna underline it almost as a comment because you've said it a couple times and I'm sure there were other moments in here um, when you were speaking to Wilbur and there was a point where you, you kind of throw it back at them and you allow for the pause. Mm -hmm. There's been so many things inside of this presentation where you allow it to breathe. You allow that pause to happen. And in the pause, that's where people have an opportunity to think. So I, I wanted to make sure that I underline that. And uh, again, I so appreciate the presentation is, is really astute. I, I love aesthetics and you, you nailed it. So uh, well done on that with the social proof and everything. So, so well done. Um, it, this is more along the lines of, you know, in, in this, obviously, I know this is part of your process, so I want to honor whatever is part of your process. Yeah. And I love, again, as I, as I look at organizing a lot of different things, I'm always looking for different strategies to be able to pull in and, and be able to apply that to myself and then also to the clients I work with. Um, and that's in terms of the resistance, right? And uh, what is it? It's the, the contrast, right? Yeah. Um, in, the, in the natural rhythm. Um, so as you're looking at putting out all those different postcards, are there certain things that you should be looking at for the, the point, the counterpoint, the point? And are there particular aspects? Because I saw that there was the orange card and the green card and the blue card. And, you know, again, obviously, I understand that there's some proprietary stuff in there. So I want to honor whatever that is. But how, how would you maybe structure that in terms of setting up the presentation? Because I could see that you spent a lot of time in developing that presentation to get it to that simple and to that type. Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that, and the reason that slide had brain dump was the label is because um, what I'll often do is, is I'll work with my clients and we'll do sort of a series of different kind of strategic brain dumps, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of them will be around that resist, you know, mapping resistance. And so that'll be exactly what we just talked about in terms of like, you know, they're going to resist here, so here's my counterpoint. And we'll go through a bunch of those and that'll all go up on a whiteboard. But then the other thing we're doing is a separate exercise where it'll be essentially like put everything down on a post-it note that you want to talk about. Everything you think is important. And, and oftentimes, you know, a lot of my clients are technology business leaders, technology founders. And so they have just untold amounts of information. <laughs> and of course they want to share all of it. And so it's a good way to kind of just get it all out and now we can look at it sort of more objectively. And so that'll be an exercise as well, starting to figure out, okay, like, well, this is good information, this is duplicate, this doesn't really fit. And so you're starting to kind of like narrow down your content. And that's mm -hmm. when we start looking at like, you know, what three key things do we wanna cover? How do those three things support our key takeaway? And so all these are sort of separate exercises, but eventually what we're doing is we're gonna put all that up on a whiteboard in a linear fashion. And so that's where a lot of those colors come into play because we'll be looking at, you know, a resistance point is red, a counterpoint is blue. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I can't remember in the context of that, like what orange meant, but everything kind of had, had a meaning behind it. And then, you know, we basically do the entire presentation or talk or whatever it is. And we haven't touched PowerPoint, visuals, fonts, colors, anything. We've mapped it all out. May have even brought in some other people and said, hey, look, at this is what we're trying to do. Here's where we're trying to get to. Does this make sense? And they'll, oh, I don't know about this or blah. And so we've already kind of really honed this is going to be before we've really committed to much. I mean, maybe we've done this in an afternoon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so again, you can tell I like to talk. So I tend to oh, answer I, my hands too long. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, and it, it's funny because, and, and to also underline too, even that, that piece, um, I know you and I connected on the Infusionsoft side. Infusionsoft is a CRM similar to HubSpot. And yeah. um, I remember hearing Brad Martineau uh, from Sixth Division. Uh, he sells Infusionsoft, like high-end Infusionsoft packages where you go there and it's it's a three-day event. And I think it's the first two, one or two days, he's like, we're not opening Infusionsoft. We're mapping all of this stuff out. So it aligns totally with that. And it's so much easier to adjust it when it's on post-it notes <laughs> as opposed to it being in some sort of system or inside of a presentation that you think, hey, that's an important point. Well, it's not as important as this point because this is really what your objective is. So thank you for digging into that. And I appreciate the, yeah, I, 
I am a, a talker as well and <laughs> I can appreciate it and, and it's welcome and it's great information. So thank you, Ashley. Thank you for taking the time today. All right. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any, any other questions? Anyone else? Uh, I've got a quick question. Well, I, and a comment. I love the, the, uh, the, the contrast and, and the rhythm. And the rhythm is one that I haven't quite never heard of it uh, put that way, Ashley. So kudos to you to, again, to making it so simple and uh, easy to understand. Um, so, and then this is, I'm assuming this is a progressive process that you do. And once you realize that some of the objections are not valid or some new ones show up. So you're constantly, it's a live uh, a document or a process that you constantly improve, right? As your sales pitch, as you're learning more about your clients, as your uh, there's there's new findings happens. You keep yeah, going. yeah. I mean, obviously, if if we're developing sort of a, a presentation that's going to be delivered on stage, okay, right. that's a little bit more encapsulated. Um, but yeah, if it's if it's a sales script or a sales dialogue, and we're starting to learn that things are changing or people are, are objecting to different things, then yeah, we'll we'll adjust that. Um, but the trick is that once, you know, like once you have your sales, I, I keep saying script, I hate to think of it as script, but once you have your kind of sales process figured out um, and it's a template and you're, you're mapping to it, then you naturally, you kind of, it's like I have 90% of it really clear in my head and I've started to see people objecting on this other point that I hadn't thought of. So I'm just going to slot it in here and replace point two or I'm going to add it. So it's, sure. it's, it's, less, um, it's less complicated in terms of an exercise. It's more just, you know, I've done the exercise, I've internalized the script, and now I'm going to like, oh, just swap this point in there. Um, sure. And sometimes it's, you know, I, I have, um, I was just looking, this is from, you know, a client thing that I'm working on right now. But what I'm doing is I, I'm actually highlighting the points that within this, so we keep the framework of it, but the things that are highlighted, we're going to change. So in one conversation, I might talk about, you know, entrepreneurs and I love entrepreneurs and ideas. But then if I'm speaking to a different type of audience, I might just swap out that piece of information and say, you know, speaking to, you know, real estate investors, you know, I know that your challenges are X, Y, Z. So I've used the same essential paragraph or framework. I've just swapped out some of the specific language. So whoever I'm speaking to is, is feeling that because I'm saying things that they can relate to.